And then, and then, yeah. right-leaning political person. Yep, yep, yep. Smarmy left-leaning takedown. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. boomer. Here we go. Here we are. Have you seen that there's been articles about that phrase this that week? That phrase. Okay, Not boomer. Even, there's been assessment articles about, like, is it like is it fair to use that? Is it nice yes. to use that? It's like, yes, yeah. it's fair. Because if you're, if you're offended by it, then you're the person it was meant to offend. Yes. <laughs> like, that is it. Yes. No one else... If, if someone's like, oh, all right, and they're not offended by it, then it wasn't meant for them. So that's cool. Speaking of being easily offended, did you fucking see the Ricky Gervais bullshit on Twitter? Oh, fuck me, so I <laughs> What, that he's been blocking people really, like, often for, for criticising him and this, that, and the other, yeah. and yet he's becoming more and more openly... Like, I hesitate to use the word, because apparently he searches his name, so I doubt, yeah, but... I, I wouldn't doubt him searching his name audibly through time and space. Yeah, just name searching. But he, he, he seems to be exhibiting some uh, transphobic views? Uh, transphobic. Or at least, or at least some, LGBT. Um, oh, those, yeah, no, those have been going Or, or at least ages. tacitly supporting people who uh, have made their platform on those views. Yes. Yeah, um, it's, it's one of those where it's like... Are you just sharing in a joke and not realising how harmful it is because you are of an age where you've decided, no, this is how the world is? Or are you are you phobic? Cause I think it's just Ricky Gervais just he's one of those Why why is he like this? quote unquote comedians who does things just to piss people off because he thinks that's comedy? And it sucks because he can be very funny. And no, he no, can, no. He let's... can be very pointed, and he can be. Let's do. Let's let's be honest about oh, this, okay. and you know, say what many people said in the wake of this this <laughs> obvious name searching and and blocking. Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington were funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And Ricky Gervais said their words. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, now that we've got rid of all the uh, easily offended people who use the word snowflake, but uh, from I don't like to, to this, be offended. Yeah. Hi. If I had one hundred and thirty million dollars for every joke, I'm. Oh wait. Says a man whose net worth is one hundred and ten million dollars. Jesus. <laughs> he identifies as funny. He. <laughs> Not sure we agree. No, no one else does. You're listening to the Big Damn Cast. I am Christopher. We probably pissed somebody off already. Johnson. And I am Matthew. Good. Watson. We have got a pretty fucking sparse news week in pop Yeah, culture. there's not much going on this week. As of the recording of this episode, that is. For all we know, the moment this is Wednesday the 6th of November. Yeah, something will happen tomorrow. For all we know, something is going to spill Something out. will happen tonight. Something will happen now. We'll make first contact this week. we're not paying attention to it. We'll make first contact. They'll actually storm Area 51 yeah. in a sizable force. <laughs> enough <laughs> that they will get in there and they will discover that... Uh, Doctor Who Dreamland was a documentary <laughs> and everyone down there looks like that. Like there's nothing oh god. <laughs> like there's nothing in Area 51. Like nothing there's no aliens in Area 51. We can I think we can I, say that. I guarantee there is like a facility. There is it, a facility. And it's probably a research facility and it's probably a military installation and that's it. It's skunk and, works. And they, it's where they test experimental aircraft. Yeah, like they will joke yeah. about it there. They'll whole joke about it. Oh yeah, like, yeah, like, they, you know, That corridor is called like the tractor beam or something it's like that. Tractor. You know, they'll, they'll they'll take the piss. And... You know, in that military industrial science way, because they've all got such great senses of humour. <laughs> I am invincible. Um, so... <laughs> hey, the think tanks are jolly places. Oh, right? okay, okay. They're fun places. You think Davros and his lot weren't having an absolute fucking ball of a time? <laughs> Outside of the car led dome, they were laughing their tits oh, off Dan all Rose the time. And, and, and all of his aides that he killed. Oh, God. We rewatched that this week. Apart from NIDA. In our <laughs> NIDA. We were, we, uh, Lucy and I were carrying on our, our Watchathon of Doctor Who from the very, be- very beginning. Mm. And we're closing toward the end of season 12 right now. Yes. And Lucy, as we've established on this podcast and in that series before, she hates Dalek stories because she's like, who wrote it? Terry Nation. They're all the same. <laughs> so as soon as this one began, I was like, this is Genesis. This is this is long held in regard as the greatest Doctor Who story ever or one of the greatest Doctor Who stories ever. Like the magazine poll had it, at number, had it as number one for like a decade it's before no Caves of Androzani pipped it. And then Day of the Doctor pipped it one year, I believe. But I think that's because everyone was like, we just had the best time and this episode united everybody. Let's... Let's vote it. United everyone um, except the fans who don't like the show. Yeah. 
Uh, no, 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 it was 2013. People still liked the show back then. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was before. It was people before. still, people still uh, couldn't uh, have easy problems with it that, that could mm. uh, be them saying they're criticising the show, but Ooh. ultimately is them criticising their homophobia, misogyny. Now, that's not everybody, obviously. Um, someone whose videos I really like, Stu Bagful, um, who did the, he did the uh, Cuddly Chibnall Time video. Uh, with the yes. Five Who Lads a couple of years ago, and he has his, he has the, the he moans, and, and he's got these brilliant series, some Doctor Who, some television retrospectives. Uh, he released a video about why he's kind of fallen out of love with the show recently. Yeah, and I it definitely uh, aligned with a lot of my friends' sort of point of view. Those who've gone, oh, I'm just not really into it anymore. I guess just not feeling. Yeah, uh, the Chibnall series was his final nail in the coffin, and it was nice because it was like, oh wow. Here's a video where somebody talks about why they didn't enjoy that series or that doctor or whatever, who's actually just talking from the heart and yes. and mm-hmm. analytically and all this that and the other and talking about how the shows made them feel at different points in their life and why now it's just not really ringing true to them anymore. And, and it's not just other. I'm afraid of wombs. <laughs> hey, I hate the womb and the wombs <laughs> that came out of the womb. Um, so that was nice, but you know, it's it's. Lucy was like that with the Daleks. She was like, I'm fucking sick of him. I can't, I just don't want to, one episode into Genesis, she'd like put down her crochet, which makes my wife, without context, sound about 90, but um, she... Only in her mind. Only in her mind. But like, she always does... Because she's she always, transplanted it into a younger body. <laughs> she always... She, oh God. <laughs> that explains so much. Uh, she always works on projects while, while we're binge watching stuff and she just, for this one, she kept stopping. And I forgot really until watching it through someone else's eyes just how fucking great Genesis it's, of the Daleks good. is it's very good I got to the end and I was like any troubles any war problems with that one she went could have been five episodes I was like could it could she was it like maybe I don't know I just that was really good I was like yeah it kind of really is good. I was like why do you think you liked it and she went because the Daleks weren't really in it and when they were they were terrifying yeah. Like, when you see the test of one in episode one, it's like, oh, there they are. Oh, but wait, this is the first one. And then the next time they speak is at the end when Davros is like, Who's, who ordered the automation of more of them? I did. Uh-oh. Well, shut, shut that off. It's like, that's against my orders and my mission. And it's like, nah, bro. oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and just the way in that story as well, it's, it's that slow reveal of these aren't just tanks. These are mutated things in the tanks and and like obviously before that you kind of knew that was what was going on in the show yeah like you'd seen them take like dr ian wrestle that thing out of the dalek casing and you see that claw come out of the thing and you see like bits of something gooey in other ones and that but you never really it's never really just this is you know that you know that it's a squiggly squiggly monster inside a, a metal thing and then this is the story that confirms that Yes, that's definitely the case, but also this is what those monsters are and <clears throat> why they are the way they are. And yes. everybody working on them who's like, yes, we're going to make these things, all think that, no, we're, we're all getting tanks. We're all getting, like, yeah. we're all getting maneuverable, like, uh, safe houses with weapons for defense on them. That's what we're getting. And it's like, nah, that was never Davros's intention. Also, Michael Wisher? Michael Wisher in the first one, yeah. Fucking brilliant. Yeah. So good. I mean, the cast in that whole story are really, really good. Neither, but he neither, <laughs> but he's amazing, and it's just it's wonderful because Lou's like, spoiler alert for a forty-plus-year-old sci-fi serial, guys. When he gets killed at the end, mm. Lucy was sci-fi like, flakes. Lucy was like, oh my god, like, what's he? But hang on, he comes back. Like, I mean, he's in the modern series, so like, does he? He comes back in the original run, right? And I went, yeah, so, but he's dead, and I just said. When he comes back, it's going to be an explanation that'll make you go, oh god, yeah. But at the same time, you'll be like, who the fuck's this Canadian guy who isn't getting it right? <laughs> and she was like, oh no, does Davros come rubbish after this? I went, no, he just he just miscast yes. the next time you see him. Destiny of the Daleks is not good. After that, though... Resurrection's good. After that, he is hands down the best yeah. thing... The consistently the best thing about all the following Dalek stories. Yeah. The character of Davros is the worst thing about the stories because it makes the Daleks just the bitch of Davros. Well, they, they stop being Dalek stories and become Davros stories. Yeah. But Terry Malloy is so yeah, entertaining that it's like, you're going to be fine. You're going to be great. I really like Resurrection, actually. Thinking back. Resurrection is a lot of fun. I think, I think out of, I think, I think unanimously Remembrance is like everyone's favourite Malloy. 
yeah. uh, story, even though he's not in it very much. No, so that's no. the favourite Davros from the Loy story because it's just so well done. But out, out of the three Malloy ones, it's, it's the best story, I think. Yeah. But I, mm. I, I, if, yeah, if I had to pick between Peter and Collins, I think I've got a soft spot for Collins. Oh, Revelations! The best story of that season. Just the glass case in with yeah, the thing yeah. in it. And, and, and as weird as it is, I like it when the show takes on weird stylistic choices. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So the fact that it freaking is opening with like Alexi Sale barking down the barrel of the camera, you're like, <laughs> what is happening right now? And the fact it keeps going back to that and everything, you're like, what is this? And it's an Eric Sayward script, so of course everyone gets fucking murdered. Yeah, and a giant polystyrene gravestone nearly kills Colin Baker. Yeah, that's a bit weird. <laughs> Such a great visual. So you see it odd. move, and then you're like, "It's polystyrene. It's oh. fucking polystyrene." You couldn't have covered that up with more sound effects or used an alternate shot. No, no, no. Polystyrene. Oh my god, it's polystyrene. Um, we were gonna fix it in the dub. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know <laughs> <laughs> they're re-releasing the season I'm twelve. A Smegup's quote. Uh, they're re-releasing the season twelve Blu-ray set. Yes. In limited quantities. Yeah, but here's the upset. The object thing. of it being fucking re-released. Well, that's the thing. I I didn't buy it when it first came out because just financially it was not a smart decision. It's expensive, for me, man. For me to drop. If I remember correctly, when it was that one was released, fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah. It was not financially uh, responsible for me to buy that. By the time I had some disposable income. <sighs> That set had gone or was on eBay for a criminal amount of money. Yeah, scalpers. And n- well, not even scalpers half the time. Sometimes it's just people would put it up for like, here it is for 80 quid. I managed to get all of the spare one or the last one in the store. Here it is for 80 pounds. I'll make myself a profit of 30 quid. Yeah. And then the vids just climbed and climbed and climbed and yeah. climbed. Um, so I just, you know, like I, I resigned to the idea that I'm probably not going to get these Blu-ray sets. And that's fine. The amount of money it costs to buy one of them will buy me all the remaining DVDs I don't have. Yeah, exactly. So that's fine. And then this was announced, and I was like, right, if they announce that they're doing this reissue, and it's in, say, like... And this would piss off the people who missed it the first time, I guess, but if it was in, like, slimline packaging... Oh, yeah, yeah. Then I would get it, because then, obviously, eventually they would do that with all of them. I think but, they need to do that. Yeah. They need to get them in, like... In America, the, in America, it's not the box. It's It's, like, a slim box set. That should be what it is. Um, like you can do an entire season in a single size case. But at the same time, this just means I will save money over the course of the next decade <laughs> for when they inevitably just release the big box set. of Or the or the box sets of each Doctor. Yeah, like, yeah. here's Tom in a box set. And then, maybe, because the only incentive really at the minute to get them is not even the picture or the sound quality or whatever. It's, it's the, the new extras. Yeah. But... I can I can wait for watching new extras. I can wait yeah, for like, a future release. That's fine. I'm not going to learn anything more about Castrovalva. I do not need to watch. I do you know. not need to watch seventies video shot <laughs> TV on Blu-ray. Mm. That's not doing me any good. There's a reason why Spearhead was the only one from the run Is that got yeah. a Blu-ray release individually because it's all on film, and as a result, upscales. Beautifully, um, yes. And the TV movie got a Blu-ray release, which I did buy because it had like um, an episode of the American like all the tie-in stuff they were doing around the fiftieth. They did one about Paul McGann and stuff, uh, stuff that went out on BBC America, and uh, they released cut downs of that on iTunes, which I got at the time. But uh, I bought the night of the, the night of the Doctor. I bought the TV movie Blu-ray to get the full version of that. Plus, there's like another special feature on there. Plus, they packaged it with Night of the Doctor and a couple of other things. So I was like, up and it was like seven quid on Amazon. So I was like, nice. oh, I'm going to spend seven quid to buy one more copy of the TV movie just so I can kind of have the the complete televised Eighth Doctor on one disc. The complete Paul McGann. The complete Majwain. Um, complete Majwain. Well, speaking of Doctor, let's get out of the way. They released a teaser post. They did uh, last week. The fools. Uh, the fools of the silhouette of the Doctor stepping out of the TARDIS from from bird's eye esque view, and Captain Bird's Eye, new companion. I'm trying to think what the jingle was for Bird's Eye Fish Fingers. I don't I couldn't know. remember. Which one? Is it the old beardy one or is it the new sexy one? Oh yeah, it's the new sexy one. It's the new sexy everything. New sexy colonel? New sexy colonel. The colonel's sexy. <laughs> the colonel who fucks. <laughs> his employee's over. Seriously. <laughs> listen, to the, listen to the podcast The Dollop. Their episode about Colonel Sanders yeah. is fascinating. Because it's like, <clears throat> the man was never a colonel. No, not actually a colonel. Not actually a colonel, but would wear the trappings of and absolutely reap the fucking is it... post-service rewards of being a colonel. Was Colonel Tom Parker actually a colonel? 
I don't know much how uh, is Tony Hawk actually a hawk? <laughs> no, Tony Hawk is a hawk. I've seen him eat. Um, oh God! <laughs> Mice. I've seen him. <laughs> I've seen him swoop down <laughs> on from a half pipe yeah. and devour a passing ocelot. <laughs> Just whole, unhinged his jaw. <laughs> like eagles do. Um, so, this is a teaser poster, and the caption that was posted with it on BBC America's site and all this and the other was, Watch This Space. Which is a great tagline. That's a great tagline. Much like Series 11's tagline was, It's About Time. It is about was, time. Which, of course, was the tagline for, someone's going to play point out, the TV movie yeah. when the trailers were airing in the night in 96. But, um, you know, it's... It's about Tim. So it's like, oh, teaser poster. Are we getting something? Uh, so, hey, remember the episode we did on Nasty Rumours? Obviously, they weren't completely true, because we've got some semblance of something coming out soon. It's yes, soon. yes. Um, whether or not, of course, it's a full season or not remains to be seen. Whether or not, 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 whether or not. Doctor it's a full season, season, full season of the show. Probably not, but maybe yes. Whether or not, whether or not. We don't know. know. Let's stop that nonsense right now. Memes. Um, So yeah, something's coming. Although it has been a week and we've not seen anything yet as of this recording. So was that, was it a tactic just to tide us over and shut us up? Yeah, probably. Or did it mean that we're actually going to see something soon and could it have something to do with the other big genre drama release the bbc has finally announced a release date for maybe we're about to learn things simultaneously maybe that drama release is going to get the doctor who trailer premiere in between it or before if they were or something in, a, it, in an attempt to i'd have done it drive up ratings for this other thing with I, a, a sketchy um, well sketchy well yeah drama. that makes sense because if they were gonna if they wanted to you know, push out Doctor Who to a bigger audience. I would have put it with his Dark Materials. Oh, absolutely, yeah. This with this weekend gone, which I've still not checked out. Which, um, whether or not people are fans of the books or whatever, people were definitely tuning in because they're like, "Wait, Ruth Wilson, James McAvoy, Lin Manuel Miranda, Daphne Keane, holy shit, I'm been, tuning in." Opinions have been divided. Like, um, there are some people who are not happy with that show at all. Yeah, but it's still impressive. It's an HBO yeah. BBC co-production. Yeah, isn't it? hence why the yeah, yeah. big ass cast. And, the um, big star-studded freaking cast involved in the making of it. I've seen unanimously, though, across the board, everyone's response has been, Daphne Keane needs to be in more things. Yeah. yeah she's like, good. Logan and this, she is two for two on being amazing. So, huzzah. Huzzah. As long um, as nobody weirdly sexualizes her like they've done for Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah, 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 yeah. fine. Have you seen that recently? <sighs> no, I, I... There's a big... A big uh, I, I can't remember. It was, it was... It was... I'm not saying which because I don't remember which and I don't want to slander any of them, but it was It was like a BuzzFeedy kind of site. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Did like a, a top 15 uh, sexiest Instagram pictures from your favourite stars. And it was done in that vein of, um, you know, oh, like... You know, some of these guys you don't think of as being like sex symbols necessarily, but like here's a picture where you post it and we all go, wow. And it's, it's obviously meant to be like a body positivity kind of like, it, it's, yeah, it's that weird yeah. thing of like the way the article was written was meant to be in a, you know, this is encouraging, isn't this? I mean, fuck, you know, look at them there. Isn't that amazing? Aren't they gorgeous? Look at but, them there! But the headline is still in a, you are using their bodies to sell clicks. So, so that's be, objectification. It's... So you, you're already at a problem. And then the furthest problem was one of the posts was about Millie Bobby Brown. Um, she's what fourteen? She's what? she's fifteen, Yeesh. going on sixteen. Jesus, fellas will predatorially fall in line and put you in a countdown on a freaking website. <sighs> because the thing is, because she's a star of a massive genre show that's mainstream streaming service like giant like Netflix, Stranger Things, etc. Because of that. People idolise them. Yeah. Idolise the kid cast of that show and they seem to be forgetting that... They are kids. They are kids. There will obviously be a large portion of those shows that are the same age as those actors who are like, yeah. oh my god, I fancy them so much and yeah. that is a big portion of the incredibly loud fandom. Yeah. No, but cool. there's also adults who don't seem to well, realise these aren't adults playing children. These are children. Back the fuck well, away, there is a whole you creepy bastards. There is a whole subsection of the men's right activist movements that are all very much well, let's lower the age of consent to thirteen. Oh, There's no God. such thing as child prostitution. There's one guy in particular oh, who, who I've been seeing called out a lot in the last week or so who's very like There's no such thing as child prostitution because 
if a child enters into prostitution, then they're entering into a contract, and it's employment. It's not. It's not slavery. It's a choice. It's like you don't understand power dynamics, and also you just want an excuse to rape thirteen year olds. So let's oh. not go there. It's like over um, here. I've seen. <clears throat> I've seen over here like Americans of this kind of ilk. I've started waking up to the fact that Britain's age of consent, sexual age of consent, is sixteen. Yeah. And they've been going right. So like someone turns sixteen, like then they can have sex. Fair, fair enough, right? And it's like, no, the age of consent is a recommendation based on medical principle. Yeah. And freaking mental development principle, but not only that, it's more a recommendation for people of that age to stick to. Yeah. It's not saying once someone turns 16, they're fair game. It's like, that's not what it's fucking saying. It's saying, hey, are you guys 15? Maybe wait a little longer before you have sex for many reasons that we are not going to get into right now. So many reasons. But it's the whole thing of people trying to use it as a thing. Yeah, well, it's fair game now. It's like, no, you no. Are creepy bastards. Just creepy. Let's increase the age of consent. I mean, let's, let's increase it to 75. <laughs> <laughs> and then every time we have sex, even at like the age of 50, if we're having sex, we'll be like, ooh, this is kind of ooh, dangerous. Not here. Yeah. Um, have you seen the Keanu Reeves stuff that's been going on? Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, he's gone public with his the first girlfriend. He's like, okay. The happy news there is just like, cool, all right, because he's been a very closed kind of person yeah, publicly yeah. and, and he, he tragically lost his wife like years ago and everything. He's not <clears> been in a great place to <clears> sort of <throat> want to talk about his po- uh, personal life yeah and that's Fair completely enough. that's completely his prerogative Fair enough. but the fact that he and his girlfriend are now quite openly like hey hi we're a thing, we're a thing. it's like you know it, it, regardless of, of whether or not you're interested in their lives or not it's like you know what good for you great yeah. like you guys feel in a happy enough place to want to share your love with the world in a very public spotlight in a very public place cool do you know what go for it mm-hmm. um and then of course the immediate things began of like oh we stand keanu because his girlfriend is age appropriate and it's not creepy. Oh my, there he is now. That's why um, I get for scrolling through things looking for the news. <laughs> and 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 all that. And you're like, no, yeah, of course, like we encourage that the circumstances are different and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but yeah, 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 sure. And then now people are having a go at him because it's like, well, he's fifty five and she's forty three. So like it's a twelve year difference and that's disgusting. And you're like, oh for mm. God's sake. They're two grown consenting adults. Leave them the fuck alone. This is not like Leonardo DiCaprio. You're turning this into an issue when it clearly is not an issue. This is not the same thing as like DiCaprio someone in their most late of his life with someone in their like early twenties, late teens. Like yeah, would you get? Come on, consenting adults. Sure, you do you. But, but there's at the a, same massive time, there's a massive power thing dynamic. Massive power dynamic at play there. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure the individual circumstances, whatever, cool, like maybe it literally is a one night thing in some cases and that's fine. You're both in on it and that's great. And then you move on with your lives. Yeah, yeah. Great. Lovely. But when it becomes about like, I have hired a yacht and I'm taking out 20 18 year olds onto this yeah. yacht. And it's like, Leonardo, that's a little bit creepy, my man. That's Save the planet though. Creepy. Save the planet. Save the planet though, Leonardo. Don't look, don't look at my private life. Save the planet. Save the planet. Um, Let me commission a song from Little... How the fuck is this guy famous, Dicky? Um, did you hear that Earth song? No, it's fucking awful. It can't be as bad as Michael Jackson's Earth song. No, no. How dare you? Michael <laughs> Jackson's Earth song is twenty times better than this. Yeah, and that's you know not saying much, but the point is, does little Dicky fuck kids though? He may as well be doing because how much he's destroying that's... for how much he's destroying uh, sort of just culture. Because if he doesn't, <laughs> that's a horrible thing to say. That's a dark joke, and that's the darkest joke I want to make. If, if he if he doesn't, that's Goodbye. one thing he's got over Michael Jackson. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> allegedly in <laughs> scare quotes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> very fucking scary quotes. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen fucking leaving Neverland. Um, <laughs> so as we were saying, <laughs> you tell between your legs if there was gonna. <laughs> If there was going to be... The walk of shame from leaving Neverland. A... <laughs> fucking hell. God. If there was going to be... We oh, don't deserve alleged. to be... It's all alleged. We don't deserve to be it's, on the air it's anymore. It's all alleged, but it's also completely open to your opinion. Look into it. There. That's our, there's our legal statement. There you go. Uh, um, Someone was doing something wrong. If there was going to be... Someone was doing something horribly wrong. If there was going to be a Doctor Who trailer we'd expect <laughs> we'd, we'd have expected it to be on his dark materials but it may also be in an effort to boost ratings on the forthcoming finally forthcoming mm. been forthcoming for a long time uh, BBC adaptation of War of the Worlds which was filmed this time last year and is now and was trailed in the the New Year trailer for 2019 yeah. we saw our yep. first glimpse of it there and 
as it ends up being our only glimpse of it for about 10 months. Yeah, and now it's coming on November 17th, uh, over a full month after it aired in New Zealand. It had a screening of some kind in the last week somewhere that was where they finally announced this is the release yeah. date of it on television, which does happen a lot in London. There's a lot of thing in London of like the BFI or the South Bank Centre screening for the companies yeah. and, and yeah. some press. Uh, their, big, their big upcoming project with Doctor Who, yeah, the, the beginning of um, series and stuff. Yeah, you know, they do it. They they make it a thing and everything. And it it seems that they normally do it though when the release date's been announced. But in this case, it was yeah they they'd done it and then they announced the release date at this event. And it's like oh okay, and it's less than two weeks away as of the release of this. Um, that's mental. That is well it's, mental. It's really strange. Yeah, that they kept quiet for so piggin' long, and now it's on its way. And the reviews but like you said, out it's of New already... Zealand aren't great. Why, is it, why did it get broadcast over there, haven't they? Well, I don't... The, the production of this show, it sounds like something went on that is... I'm intrigued by. I don't want to... I hesitate to use the word fascinating, because it's probably not that interesting. <laughs> giving too much credit. Yeah, but, uh, like... For this to be filmed and then put on the shelf for so long. That's one of the reasons I'm intrigued to see it. Not only, you know, I'm a sucker for all things War of the Worlds, but, um, and, you know, I'll... You I'll, do love war. I, and you do worlds. love worlds. Yeah, famously. Um, and I'll watch, you know, <laughs> even, I'll watch them in the bad adaptations of that. I've got the, the asylum adaptations knocking around somewhere ready to watch at some point. Um, ready, willing, and able and I do. Scream. I do want to get my hands on the Pendragon Pictures version just to see how fucking awful it is, because I've seen clips from that. <laughs> And they are the worst. Um, but you know, it's it's a it's a story that keeps getting adapted for for good reason. It's a it's a foundational tale of the sci fi canon. Vum vum vum. Oh, fuck me, so good. I need I need to get my hands on the Audacity uh, full cast version of that. Vum vum vum. Stop 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 stop. I keep getting ads for it with the Michael Sheen voiceover mm. into the thing. It's like, oh god, Michael <laughs> Sheen channeling Richard Burton. Um, no one would have believed. Oh, stop, 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 stop. You're going to give me chills. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just, I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see it because I'm, there's got to be something wrong with it for it to have been shelved for this long. Yeah. It's been the put, people involved. Put off, barely announced. Like, there's not been a trailer. No. Um, sort of announcing the launch day yet. There was the coming soon trailer that we got a while back that we talked about. Uh, end of weeks September, ago. beginning of no, October, yeah. Um, but there hasn't been any like new trails saying here's the release. It's just like surely that's imminent. That's that's good. That's got to be on on the cusp of being put together. It has to be, or at least a re-release of the initial just... trailer with a coming zingy da zingy da 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 Sunday the seventeenth of November. Um, but anyway, this is been... it, is it a one? I think it's three part. Three part. So I'm assuming it would be Sunday seventeenth, Sunday fourteenth, oh fourteenth, <laughs> Sunday twenty fourth, <laughs> and. Um, Yes. Sunday uh, 1st of December, presumably. Probably. 1st of December? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Yes, because it's the 30 days of November. Hi. Hi. I'm a, I'm an actor, not a mathematician yeah, well, or a smart person. <laughs> your uh, your sense of time is about to go out the fucking window when you get to Lincoln, so... Jesus Christ, tell me about it. Um, Tell me about it. Tell yeah. her about it. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, I just, I just, if you were going to, if you wanted to pull ratings up for this thing, I'd put a Doctor Who trail with it, because then people would tune in for that. Mm. But, because I think it's just, I don't think, they're, they're, they're ashamed of it. Mm. For some There's reason, something about the BBC it. are ashamed yeah. of it, and I'm intrigued to watch it and find out why, what that is, because how do you fuck up the War of the Worlds? could be something even pettier than that, actually. Like, just an internal BBC spat. If we, if we look at who Commissioner was at the time and, and who they are now, or oh, like yeah. who the head of dramas and stuff at the time, it could just be that it's... <sighs> what the, the production the, company actually was, that yeah, there was a commission for it. The, there's an annoyingly common trope within the world of television, which I've experienced myself and I've seen happen to people before, and, and when you look into a lot of production things or what's behind the scenes of 70s and 80s TV where people don't give a shit and just talk openly about it. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah you'll find out that there seems to be a weird thing where if a new person is in charge at some level, they give next to no shits about the projects that were greenlit by their predecessor. Even if those projects haven't come out yet. You've got to make they, the mark. They just give no shit. Yeah. So they will fast track stuff for them. 
They will put stuff out on a, at a stupid time because they just don't give a damn about it. They're like, oh, we'll put it in the schedule somewhere. Well, that's fine. Mm. It's really, really odd. It's a really odd thing. And it's because a lot of people in those positions just want to be like, I did this. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, part of the, <clears throat> part of you doing your job well is also facilitating what the previous person set into motion. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's, it's the difference between, like, Obama and Trump. But uh, in I terms think, of like, Obama comes in and is like, right, here's stuff we're going to do. We're going to work on this. We're going to develop that. We're going to see this to its end. And we're going to start this up. We're going to set it up and we're going to do this. And we're going to do that. And Trump comes in and is like, everything the guy before me did is bullshit. But I think we're I'm going to do new things. Uh, I'm gonna do, and then and then claimed credit. Well, the difference is he claimed credit for some shit that the Obama yeah, administration yeah, put into, into practice. But I think we've established at this point that... We've just lost someone sim- else as well. Similar to we've po- totally just lost at least two other people. Oh, fantastic. Good. Uh, similar to politics, <laughs> um, in TV, you it doesn't really matter what you do right, because you can just fail upwards. Yeah. Especially if you're yeah. a white dude. Yes. As, as was borne out by the recent Benioff and Weiss Q&A at Austin Film Festival that we mm. touched on last week. Christ that, alive. Which, which, which is rumoured to be the reason that the announcement that we talked about last week of them quitting Not Star, Wars Star Wars yeah. was... Uh, and now it's come out that they were looking to do a Jedi origin film of course they were um, because but, they're out of ideas yes. and they're like what do people want? Je- Jedi let's do early Jedi let's do early Jedi we've got a bunch of source um, material that we can use That's we'll do that and it's like cool I mean what people really want from the Star Wars franchise right now is something brand fucking well, new well, that well, hasn't a- been done before apparently Lucasfilm weren't happy with the way they were they, they and Lucasfilm are going in different directions with it and that's what led <laughs> to them Christ. Uh, stepping away from the project. I do, um, I do wonder what's going on there. Also, like, I really do wonder what's going on there. Buried. <laughs> fucking Game of Thrones. Like, yeah. They buried the goodwill they had for a lot of that. And I like, I, you know, and we've said, I've said, I don't hate the, the way the series ended, but the execution definitely left something to be desired. Um, <clears throat> but yes. The stuff coming out now that they fell out with um, George R. R. Martin. I can believe Like that. two seasons in. <laughs> I can also believe that. And, and then it was a reluctant working relationship. And then when he stepped away to work on the uh what is it, the thingy of winter? Winter winter. Winter winter. Um it wasn't because uh he was like, I need to focus more on that. It was because they basically said we're not working with him anymore. So HBR had to sort of like politely kick him off of the production aside from a consultant role. Wow. <laughs> because up to like series five, didn't he write an episode a season as well? Yeah. yeah. That was in his contract. And then he stopped. It's like, interesting, that. That's interesting. Hmm. It's almost like they've gone, no, this is our baby. It wouldn't surprise me if those scripts were more competent as well, because oh, we he's, can... he's got TV experience. Yeah, or Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Freaking Beauty and the Beast. Linda, Linda Hamilton. Hamilton. Ron Perlman. Bringing it all back to recent topics. There I've we go. I've never seen that show. I'm going to have to watch it. Somewhere. Great stills, though. Great um, stills. They make stills. lovely stills. Lovely stills. The production stills. Love that makeup. Um, <laughs> you were talking about fucking age disparity oh, as well in that. Jesus. And Hamilton um, was like 30. Ron Perlman was like 50 something. Oh, he wasn't that old then. He wasn't that old, but he, Ron Perlman has been 50 something since he was born. He's only in his 60s now. I think he's in his 70s. Fuck you. I'm pretty sure he is. Nah. Sure he is. I refuse impre- to believe it. He's impressed on Sons of Anarchy and uh, he mentioned his age and I was like, shut the front door. To say that, on, on the subject of Ron Perlman, um, I had a dream the other night. Of Ron Perlman? No, you, you had the Perlman. You had the Ron Perlman dream. It, it's Ron Perlman adjacent. Oh, I see. I had a dream the other night that I, we was, all say I, that. That I was working on a play with David Harbour and I upset him at the read-through by shitting on Hellboy. <laughs> I don't think it would upset him. <laughs> that. Don't you worry. Oh, maybe it would oh. upset him. Or oh, you win. 69. Ooh, 69. Nice. 17 in a few months' time. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. I told you. He's 16, man. Um, Hellboy 3. It's not too late. It's, it's, it's definitely too late. They did Terminator Dark Fate. It's not too late to do Hellboy 3. Yeah, but you have to Gielo, wait. use that Oscar boss. You have to wait 30 years before you do the true sequel. That's what we've learned. <laughs> and uh, it's not going well for Terminator Dark Fate at the box office, so I know, which is I a know. shame because um, it's the best sequel they've done since T two. And you um, know that the lessons that will be taken away from it will be the wrong lessons, as they always fucking it w- are. It won't be all oh, right. People had franchise fatigue for this franchise. Yeah. They don't particularly want to. Like it was like me before seeing it. I was like, I'm not expecting anything because like you, you had you had no expectations. I had very low expectations. I am not. I had. I had. I was. 
cautiously optimistic about yeah. it. Because I, I liked what I seen in the trailer. You had slightly trailers. happy expectations. Yeah, um, you were hopeful. You were like you were like the, you were like the child on Christmas Day, looking at the big box and wondering if it's the fire truck. I'm always, always wanted. I'm always hopeful. It turns out to I'm be often disappointed. A school uniform and a box of shoes. Oh no! Not even matching shoes. Just, just a box of odd box shoes. Of odd shoes. <laughs> Here you go. Got these pity. from the from the shoe from the. They're all the. Other pairs of the ones that people steal from the displays. Enjoy, little Yimmy. <laughs> I can't wear heels this long. I'm only seven. <laughs> I don't have the I don't have the dexterity. Um, it's 2020, <laughs> they say to you. <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever you want. No, no, no. I mean, physically, I can't stand up in these fucking things. Spoiler alert: you will de-age and uh, also receive shoes from me next Christmas. Fantastic. <laughs> fucking kitten heels. Um. <laughs> So Rick and Morty season four, it's oh, coming. Oh, speaking of obnoxious, it's coming. <laughs> um, it's coming to Freeview over here. It's coming to Channel Four. Holy shit balls! But Morty, we're not getting it till January. Huh? Boo! When's it coming out of the states? November? November this month. Yeah, we might get it on Netflix because they Maybe had they had will. season. Season three? three, not that long after broadcast, from correct. If Channel Four are getting oh, it in January, we got that season, might not be the case. We got season three over here on. Virgin, if I remember correctly, Virgin got it like as it went out. So oh yeah, week, they had, week, yeah, you could watch it. Um, I think it was a week after, and then Netflix got it not long after that. Um, yeah, I think we we're a week behind. That's right. Uh, Netflix got it not long after that. So it seems odd that they're doing this, but maybe Channel Four knows something we don't know, i.e., when the next five episodes of the season are going to drop. Yeah, because it'd be nice if they're not too far apart. Maybe Channel Four will start it. In time for when the fifth episode airs, the week after will be the debut of the sixth episode on Adult Swim. Would be nice. Would be nice. And that way, if that was the case, I would... Sorry, algorithm. I would hold off for the Channel 4 broadcast and and uh, get them all week by week and turn it into a like, you know, nice appointment television. Yeah. Which, you know, would be nice. We don't do anymore. I'd like, I'd like to be happy with Rick and Morty. I'd just settle for being happy. Oh, hey. I'd take that. Oh, <laughs> but you know he's not happy and this is a point you raised to me me because I had to listen to the um, Brexit the other night out of morbid curiosity oh, yeah. um, it was so cut and paste it was oh, not there was some good ideas in there there was some good ideas but it was mostly just let's make all these little Britain sketches specifically themed around Brexit and that's the beginning and the end of the joke that sounds Fucking awful. It was the beginning and the end of the joke. There was a couple of really killer lines that worked really well, and it was really fun hearing like Ruth Jones, Paul Putner, Anthony Head, like their voices popping up, and it was like, oh shit! Tom Baker's narration, of course, as always, Fantastic. was the best thing about it. Tom Fantastic. Baker's narration has always been the best thing about Little Britain, but it spoke volumes that this is essentially like Little Britain's, if you if you judge him by like rock profile kind of era. Yeah, this is like almost the Little Britain anniversary. You know, you're edging onto like. 15 plus year well no more nearly 20 years of of of, of uh Williams and Lucas working together yeah um and this is that a one off half hour episode based on Brexit when 2 years ago League of Gentlemen celebrated the 20th anniversary of their radio series on BBC Radio 4 with three fucking excellent pieces of television <laughs> and then a UK wide tour that spanned the next year of their life so, just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Hashtag but you know what else has been just saying? Tying back to your beautiful segue, yeah, which so I hijacked with little Brexit because I had to vent about it. Because I, I was like, do you know what? I'm going to listen to it. And I did. And now I regret it. That's what this it. show's for, Chris. Little Brexit. Venting. Reviews. Um, tell me all about Jared Leto and how he's pissed off. Jared Leto. Speaking of people who fuck kids. You might have... I mean, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. So, Jared Leto. Oh, God. Uh, might have heard of him, folks. We're going to get he's a musician so much legal trouble. He's a musician and an actor. Uh, yeah, but at least... And he's not, allegedly a musician. Uh, uh, at, least we're not, at least we're not doing a tour for a band comprising now of two of us that doesn't yeah. actually make sense. Yeah, my friends Nor went are to we see... sliding into the DMs of 17-year-olds, despite the fact we're in our 40s. My friends went to see 30 Seconds to Mars, and it was just Jared Leto and his brother. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. So they knew they had backing tracks, so they had other musicians off stage. That's a fuck. What a fucking ego trip. Mm-hmm. Jared Leto's a musician, fucking... scare quotes, and an actor. 
slightly thinner scarecrow. He's an Oscar winner, uh, so he he's must be winner. good. He has delivered some really interesting and really really compelling performances in movies. Yeah, he he's, is, he's, he's, he's proven that he's, he can he can act. He's just also a massive twat. <laughs> he's better in small doses in films, I better find. In, better in no doses, personally. Well, well one movie, <clears throat> of course, uh, had him in small doses uh, after some severe editing and cutting. <laughs> Which was 2016 Suicide Squad, which we talked about a lot in our first run. For our first episode, we talked about um, expectations for Suicide Squad. The our, trouble with our, Harley Quinn. Our seventh or eighth episode was about Suicide Squad. Um, yeah, that happened. And Jared Leto's Joker was fucking dog shit. Yeah, um, it was. There was speculation he was going to be a pretty terrible take on the character from the initial still that went I mean, out. I mean, the design was was bad to start with. Just so weird. Remember when they released that image? It was on like Batman's seventy fifth birthday or whatever it was. It was like, oh it was yeah, like, it was like it was like twenty fourteen. Like yeah, it was twenty fourteen. Yeah. They released that still because production was about to begin on Suicide Squad proper. Yay! And it was a still of Jared Leto as the Joker, and he's clasping his head and he's screaming and all this. And you were like, got the the grill oh, he's covered in these the, tats the and tattoo. and people were like, why is he covered in the and then word got out, apparently official word, that the tattoos weren't on the character. That it was just part of this homage, because this image wasn't released to be like, here's a Suicide Squad sneak peek. It was, here's Jared Leto as the Joker, Batman's most significant villain, most memorable villain. Uh, we're about to start production on Suicide Squad, and here at Suicide Squad we're wishing Batman a happy 75th birthday. Here's like an image as tribute. Just... And official word got out that those tats weren't permanent. They weren't part of the character design. Well, <laughs> but then shortly after, David Ayer was like, "No, they are," which makes me think that someone was trying to do damage control. Go, David, have you seen the reaction to these tattoos? Get rid of them. And David's gone. This is my vision. I'm keeping them. David Ayer was like, "Listen, I wrote and directed End of Watch. I can do whatever I want. End of Watch is pretty good. Uh, you also wrote and directed Sabotage. Listen, I can do whatever I want. It's Fury his as well. I think so." Uh. I hear people liked Fury. I've There's good it. stuff in these movies, but David Hayes. Is a, I mean, he's he bright. So Fuck, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Sabotage was a. That was that was my sort of low water mark of David Ayer prior to Suicide Squad, and I think he got he was even Suicide Squad was even worse than Sabotage. What's worse, Suicide Squad or Bright? I'd argue Bright. Oh fuck me! That's a. So I'd choice. argue Bright because Suicide Squad at least gives us nice bits with Viola Davis. That's like and asking Will me Smith. whether I'd rather cut off my left ball or my right ball. Yeah, but your left ball uh, has Margot Robbie on it. <laughs> left ball. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like why are you on my ball, Margot Robbie? I live here now. No. Um, so bless her um, and her ball um, hibernating pattern. What doesn't make sense. <laughs> Uh, do you not have Australian actors hibernating in your testicles? No, no. Jason, no. Jason Donovan's been down there for years. Gotta <laughs> um, <laughs> make room for Kylie when uh, winter comes around. <laughs> oh, 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 they're gonna snuggle in your folds. <laughs> they're gonna um, snuggle right in my wrinkly folds. Jesus so, Christ! Now that I've do- doomed this episode, to this the is what happens when there's first. a slow news week. Um, Jared Leto's in Suicide Squad as Joker. He's fucking terrible. The look of the Joker is awful. His approach is weird, and it's made even worse. By the fact that all these stories came out in the lead up to it that he was oh, going super yeah. method into the role. Back then, we we assumed, speculated that the Joker would be the primary antagonist of the mm. film, and maybe the Suicide Squad would be in sent to apprehend the Joker. Which we were like, <clears> that <throat> sounds like a really cool idea for a Suicide Squad movie. A bunch of characters that general audiences aren't as familiar with. You get them on board by being like, hey, do you know who the villain is? The most known villain in all of comic books is the bad guy in the film. Come on board. This will be great. Hey, because he's the villain, one of the team is going to be Harley Quinn, a hugely popular fan favorite character. And we're yeah, going to get this amazing true. actor, Margot Robbie. She's like an up and comer within Hollywood stuff. She's really bloody good. We're going to get her in the role. And Will Smith's going to be in his dead shot. You can have a great time, guys. Come on board. Um, by the way, Jared. Oh my God, if you guys liked Heath as the Joker <laughs> in the Dark Knight, Jared's been going super method. <laughs> Because Warner Brothers have never downplayed the myths surrounding Heath Ledger's take on the Joker. They've never no, downplayed it. No, the, the myths were that he lost himself in the role. And getting I think lost people in that involved role. with the production have since downplayed it. Oh, they have, yeah. but Warner Brothers have never. Oh no, because it's good effort. publicity, isn't it? Um, he got, but then they've gone. He got so submerged in the role that it led to the stuff that led him using antidepressants and all this. 
that led to his eventual suicide no. uh, or accidental um, overdose. But they never, they've never been like, yeah, no, that's bullshit. They've always, they've never denied it. They've never denied it. And they've always hinted at being like, yeah, he got so into it. Like, this is how amazing it is. You should definitely buy our film. <laughs> now, The Dark Knight is undeniably a fucking great it movie. It is a great movie. And Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker, and especially, especially that version of the Joker, is fucking great. I'd he's... say it's held up a lot better than Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. But, like, <laughs> Heath's Joker is separated from the classic Joker, but is undeniably the same character. Yeah, yeah. There's um, enough of, of the Joker DNA in there for him to be a Joker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's one of those where it's like, right, he's the Joker... But he's a military weapons expert, and the clown thing is just war paint. Yeah, that's it. Like that's the separation. He's still like you could put. But him that's not even. Like, they don't it's... even go into that in the film. That's just. Oh yeah, stuff that's, that's, that's in... it's suggested yeah. and in the supplementary materials. Yeah, but it's like it's enough that you're like he's so different, but he's definitely the same character. So when the Leto stuff came out, um, they were making a big thing about how method he was going to be. <sighs> he's, fucking... he's been so method. He's going to be crazy like the Joker. So we were all like... I think when we first heard that he was being method and sending his castmates weird gifts and that's all we'd heard. Yeah. It was like, oh, okay, that's... All right. Oh, I wonder what he's doing. And then it came out what he was giving. He sent Margot Robbie a dead rat. He sent Will Smith... It's Will Smith. Will Smith. Will Smith bullets with his initials engraved into them. Good, Like they were meant for him. Good. He sent used condoms to everyone on the cast at one point. Why? He sent... Oh, who's the actor who played Killer Croc? Uh, oh, my God. Ooh, he's got a great he's name fucking as well. Brilliant, he's a brilliant physical performer, and he's wasted in that movie, because it's like, you don't have to put him under that much makeup. Oh, my God. It's, uh, I think it's had a while, eh? something. Let me... I want to get his name right, because he deserves yeah. the respect. I, even I just... he, he deserves the respect, even though Suicide Squad didn't show him any of it by burying him underneath that fucking makeup. I think, I think he did a good job with the makeup, though. Hmm. But they didn't give him enough to do, so he was just effectively a putty from Power Rangers with teeth. Like, if you're going to put him through all that, at least give him some good material to work yeah. with. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Adewale Akinuyoi Agbajar. Fucking Bye-bye. great. He was also Curse in Thor The Dark World. Another great physical yes. performance. Yes. Um, because that is the most frightening <clears throat> thing in that movie. Like, when you see Curse, you're like, fuck! And the way he behaves, he's terrifying. Motherfucker has a master's in law as well. Yeah. Fuck. Everybody who gets a degree in law do, who wants to go into it at a younger age does not go into it. It's people who, yeah. people, people who actually go into working in law, nine times out of ten are people who go into it later in life. Oh, shit. He was in Congo. Really? Yeah. Wait, Congo, as in Tim Curry with... As in Mr. Hamaka, stop eating my sesame cake. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy fuck. Um... <laughs> stop Not... eating my sesame cake. Not a great film, but a great fucking movie night. Fuck you, it's a great film. It's not. <laughs> it's but not. it's a great it's movie really night. Not. It is a great movie night. Uh, um, so, fuck. any Hudson. Like, he got sent... Yeah? Oh, fuck. Mm. He got sent... Uh, Killer Croc... Eric Rock got sent uh, Playboy magazines with all the pages stuck together from Jared Leto. The guy who played Why? the security guard who was like the Joker's inside guy. Why? Um, he got sent um, instructions every day and was made to do chores for Jared in character as, as he what called himself on fuck? set, Mr. J was what he called himself on set. So... The reason I'm bringing all this up is all this method and wank and pretension doesn't Mm. lead to anything good. This is the problem I have with method acting. As a Mm. fucking actor, as a performer, like, what does it do? What does it actually do to enhance your performance? It doesn't do fuck all. You fucking learn the words, (laughs) you hit your mark, and you say the words like you fucking mean them. It's also a fundamental misunderstanding of the character of the Joker. Yeah. Even that version, that version in that film is so ill-defined that you could do anything with it yeah and what he chose to do was do like a freaking reddit threads version of oh wouldn't it be crazy if like that's all he did with it like the joker only does twisted shit if he finds it funny if you go in that angle that's why he, he does it i think it gives he more does of an insight if he finds it funny into jared leto's sense of humor yeah the joker's sense of humor now like it's just I fucking mean, if you're gonna do something like that do some weird shit. do fucking i don't know like just send people 
send people fucking boom boxes that are just playing Party Man. Do you know what I mean? Just now do that. That's a joke. And be like, move. like you're making. Do you know what I mean? Just do that because it's like, and also a great Christmas gift. Why has he sent this to me? Or like, <laughs> yeah. Or send them. Or send them. Or send them clowned up teddy versions of themselves or something, just to make them go. Oh, that's a bit weird. Like yeah, just something like yeah. that, so that when they do their scenes with you, they're a bit like, oh, because you can see what he was trying to do. He's trying to make it so that everybody in the thing felt a little uneasy around him, a little confused, so that when you'd have the scenes, maybe that that would translate. Um, but there's a word for that. It's called fucking acting. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you don't... Exactly. <laughs> now, if he was now if he was a main presence in the film, or have like one big well. scene set piece, and you wanted to kind of keep him from everyone a bit. And, and freak yeah. them out a little. Fair enough. It can work. The alien chestburster scene in the original Alien. No one in that cast, bar John Hurt, knew exactly what was going to happen. They'd all been briefed on the basics, but they didn't know what was going to happen until they got that take. And those reactions are wonderful. And when it's done like that, and not in a Kubrick with Shelley Duvall kind of way, it, it's mm. it's great. I thumbs up that. If you can keep an element of surprise, go for it. You know like the I mean? um, chest burster scene in the original Alien. That's what I just said. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't I? What? <laughs> you were trying to think of another scene, and that was the first one that came to mind. Yeah. Just like, that's the best example. Because it is the best example of it. Fuck. <laughs> that's right. No, but there's, there's, other, there's other instances. Uh, Bill Skarsgård um, yes. did the read through of it with the kid cast. Yeah. And then they didn't see him again. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. didn't show the kids any footage or stills or anything of what Pennywise was going to look like. They showed them nothing. Mm. So that the first day they filmed with him was the first time they saw him. And he didn't, like, pretend to be a clown the whole time. But it was just so that that air of, oh, God, this is weird, was there yeah. on that day. And that day is the fight in the kitchen. So you can see it in the kitchen in the knee house. Yeah, yeah. So you can see it on their faces when they first come through. They're like, fucking hell! And they it wasn't like they waited till they were rolling to bring him out. Like, they saw him on set and they rehearsed and blocked the scene and everything. But it was so that on the day they'd be like, oh God, that's the first I've seen of it. That's really weird. Mm. Oh, he looks really scary. Oh my God, that's really cool. And they'd get a genuine reaction. So I get it. I get what Leto could have been going for. What he went for instead was just being an obnoxious twat. Which is, to be fair, is his default. The extended cuts come out. I have not put myself through the extended cut. I don't think I But have. I have, for the sake of this, out of curiosity, watched those additional scenes oh. online. Wow. They add nothing. How much Joker do they add? It's about another four minutes of him. Oh, wow. That's four minutes too many. And uh, it's, it's him and Harley have an argument in the car on the way to the chemical plant. Sure, what? And they get out of the car and he's having a go. Or she's having a go at him. And he just basically like spills out what he is. There's a bit where he straight up says, like, I'm an idea. And you're like, what? The fuck? What? The sure, the sure, the okay, fine. Batman can be anyone. <laughs> Batman can well, you know, like just what the Batman hell? can be anyone who's a rich millionaire. But it's just like rich millionaire. That's a tautology. Rillionaire, rillionaire, <laughs> rishillionaire, billionaire, um, bat millionaire, Trilli um, bat trillionaire. Alfred, bring me my bat millions. <laughs> um. <laughs> Holy Scrooge McDuck vault, Batman! You um, totally haven't even talked about the Batman casting news. It doesn't matter. Ah, I'll screw that. It's, it's not confirmed. It's, it's not All confirmed. I'm saying is, if McConaughey's Two-Face... Well, if McConaughey's Harvey Dent, that means we're going to get a Two-Face in a later movie, which makes me sad, because it means we're doing that again. And you can do that again, but why? When there's so many others that haven't had the chance. Like, do it differently. But also, it makes me sad, because I wanted McConaughey for Osborne. But anyway. Colin Farrell um, Penguin, though. Uh, who for Penguin? Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell Penguin, I'm not against, but, like, why are we taking the roles away from the short squat actors? Circus Alfred. Fucking Toby Jones as Penguin, please. Oh. Toby Jones as the motherfucking Penguin. Toby Jones. Paul Williams as the motherfucking Penguin. He voiced him in the animated series, and then he basically plays him in that scene in Baby Driver, when he's the arms dealer. Yeah, yeah. He's playing the Penguin. Just fucking cast him! The Penguin doesn't have to be a main villain. He could be the, the informant that Batman beats the fuck out of in one scene to get some information. And we put it out there that the Penguin is always present, is legally untouchable, but Batman knows his shit and will beat him up for info when he needs him. Like, do that. Don't make the Penguin a main antagonist. Make him a feature of Gotham. Like the Joker? No. <laughs> save, the Joker for, save the Joker for your third fucking movie. When you make Jared him, Leto back. Make, no. 
Make the joke to your grand finale so that we have to build up to him. But don't tease him either. Don't tease him in the other movies. Mention him, but don't tease that he's coming. Just have him be in the third and final installment. No, he teased he's coming because he sent the used condoms. Oh my god. <laughs> so- <laughs> I can't tell if you're laughing because you've not put the tattoo of a mouth over, oh, you, yes. over yourself. Oh, yes. Sure, 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 sure. So Jared Leto does all this shit. The main reason I'm bringing all this up is because Jared Leto has now been outed by several media outlets as to having tried to, or still is trying to, sabotage the success of the Todd Phillips, Joaquin Phoenix movie Joker. Mm-hmm. So it was announced that Jared Leto was cast as the Joker for Suicide Squad, and it was announced that it was a multi-picture deal, and he was playing him in the Suicide Squad. He was going to play him in a joker and harley centric project which could have been either a joker and harley movie or a batman film where they were the main antagonists or something like that and also a joker standalone movie um and also a suicide squad sequel so he was tied in for four pictures including the one he was in uh yeah um or was that five pictures i don't know some some pictures some some amount of pictures which is way more than it should have been yes um i.e any then Warner's announces that they're doing this solo Joker movie that has nothing to do with the DCEU and it's going to star Joaquin Phoenix. And what, 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 what? Do you want to know our opinions on that? Go back a few episodes. We But don't make an 11 hour video response. Yeah, we did not care for it. But... <laughs> Just fucking hell. But anyway, Jared Leto was hurt and offended that they would do that. Um, wounded? Now, <laughs> I don't know. Bleeding? Limping? It's possible that he was wounded and offended because he knew at that point that they had no further plans for him despite the contract Warner Brothers have all the money they can easily buy him out of that contract and be like look it's 30 million dollars fuck off and leave us alone now they can do that if they want to yeah and if he has any common sense he should just go yeah sure okay fine whatever and off he pops but the thing is his continuity still exists with the upcoming Birds of Prey and Wonder Woman 1984 the DCEU continuity is still there so as far as the DC Extended Universe goes, that Joker is the Joker. He could legally be like, no, you signed me up. I'm going to do more films. Scenes have been shot for Birds of Prey featuring his version of the Joker, but not with him. While he was over here in Manchester, the very own town of Manchester, England, England, he was shooting Morbius over here. For oh, Sunday. great. Another film I can't wait to not see. Oh, fucking hell. Matt Smith, why? Get out of there. Stop. Get out of there, Matt. Stop backing the wrong horses. Um, da- David got out of there. Leave the horses and- alone. David got out of there and you can too. I'll give you a court order. We don't need another postman part of the movie. Um, <laughs> so, I know one listener specifically is going to be very mad we said that. Did we need one Sorry, in the John. first place? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, <laughs> um, like, while he was filming that, Birds of Prey was shooting scenes of Harley Quinn being kicked out of a house and all the stuff thrown out the window by the Joker. Different actors standing in, dressed in the Leto guise. Did he send used condoms to his classmates? I fucking hope not. <laughs> um, I bet, do you know what? I bet he sent them fucking gift baskets and said, I, I heard the last time someone dressed in this outfit. <laughs> Shit happened. Because so that's the only to... way you can play the Joker, apparently. Roby, uh, Margot Roby, I'm going to send you not a dead rat. I'm going to send you a big stuffed toy of Gus Gus from Cinderella. <laughs> Just cuddle it and feel better about yourself. I'm really fucking sorry that guy did that stuff. Um, oh, that was the thing. The only actor he didn't mess with that's come out since was Viola Davis. Viola Davis made it clear from day one, if you fucking pull shit like that with me, me and my husband will beat the shit out of you. I Yeah. Okay. And it's like, why bring your husband into it as a line of defense? That seems weird until you realize, oh, because she's basically saying, if you send me semen in a fucking condom, me and my significant other are going to beat the crap out of you. Yeah. It's like, sure. So she obviously took it as a sexual perversion and an offensive thing to oh, yeah, to receive. Yeah. So know. it's like, good on you. And as a result, I mean, they never shot any scenes together. They never had any scenes no. together. But he never had any scenes with fucking, you know, Slipknot or Killer Croc. <laughs> and yet he sent them stuff. Joker doesn't have a scene with Deadshot, but he got bullets inscribed well, no, no, no. and sent to Will Smith. He doesn't Smith. have a scene with Deadshot in the film. Or from the extended Because they, they were talking about or how, like, we've cut? shot so much Joker footage, we've basically got enough for a whole mother movie. And they might have done. Like, they might have had more. The extended cut only put some scenes back in. It's entirely possible that there was more shit, but do we want to see it? 
No. Go. It was a terrible performance. It was like a. It was like a. And I say this as someone who who performed in these and was proud of them at the time, and it got me a grade. His take on the Joker was like someone in a B Tech uh, final piece, or specifically a GCSE final drama piece. Too fucking right. Like. He was five minutes away from wearing a blank white mask and Massive Attack being the soundtrack to what he was doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, no, I'm going to play a crazy person. All right. Okay. Cool. You're an Oscar winner. This is the best you can fucking come up with. <laughs> really? He, he studied the motions of sharks. Did he? Did he? Did he fucking do that? What, is he playing a shark? Like... Also, well, the sc- I mean, the, to be fair, it's not all Leto's fault why that character doesn't work in that film. The no, script, the script is awful. Fuck all for the script the is Joker. Dark, yeah. The Joker, as we've said in this podcast before, he's not the Joker. He's Harley's boyfriend. As Harley Quinn in that movie is not the best interpretation of Harley Quinn. She's the Joker's girlfriend. Because now we've got so many relationship goals memes featuring oh, the Joker Jesus and Harley. Jesus Christ. Abusive relationships. <clears throat> it can be fun to watch those characters interacting together and being bad guys together. Yes, there is undeniably fun in that in the same way there's fun in watching any bad guys doing stuff in movies. But guess what? They're not relationship goals, motherfuckers. No. They are a textbook example of physical and mental abuse between people in a relationship. Oh my God, please stop. Anyway. Please. So, please. If you want to wear Joker and Harley stuff on like t-shirts and stuff, Cool, go for it. Yes, they are a, they are a duo of criminals in the Batman lore. With, and and you can have fun escapades where Batman is defeating Joker and Harley Quinn. And they have neat visual telling, designs. And, but you if know. you're telling stories about Harley Quinn, you shouldn't be championing their relationship. <laughs> it's no. fucking weird. Um, Mad Love does not have a happy ending. No. It's a tragic ending. The very end of it, she decides she's finally going to fucking be rid of him. And she, she gets wheeled to Arkham. She's like, an escape. I'm gonna. I'm away from him. I'm gonna. That's it. We are through. And then she gets to her cell, and a fucking gift has been left. It's just like a flower and a little note saying "Love Jay." And she immediately slips back into like, oh, pudding. It's a bad ending. It's there to make you go, oh no. It's it's ah fucking. The best thing they've done with her in the comics is get her away from Joker. I would I would argue yes for her character, but I still think the best stuff that's. The best Harley Quinn related stuff that I've ever read has been the stuff where she's been a villain, a Batman villain. So it, it, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. terms of the strongest stories, either as just daft stories of look at these clown bad guys, or the more kind of oh that's upsetting, yeah, yeah, sort of stories. The best stuff has been done when she's been a Batman villain. I okay. think. Yeah, yeah. I'd like her sense. solo series a lot, but she has just become female Deadpool. Yeah, which is a little boring because it's like Deadpool's Deadpool. Why are we just doing more Deadpool? But Harley Quinn, do something new. Although, when they do miniseries where it's just like her and Ivy going on a road trip and stuff, that's great. Gotham City Sirens, really cool. Yes. Really, really cool. That is a, you know, Harley and Ivy live together, Catwoman fucks them over, they beat the shit out of her one time, and then go, actually, do you know what? If you're going to live on the lamb, let's all live on the lamb together, and they do shit together. And mm. it's great. And it's a really cool, like, oh my god, like, three Batman villains in a team-up book. Anti-hero story. Great. Anyway, why well, don't you mean, like, the, the, <laughs> mo- the, mo- the most... Po- positive <clears throat> thing they've done for her character as a, as a fully fledged rounded out human being has been taking her away from the Joker. Yeah. Because she doesn't deserve that stuff. She's still a villain. She deserves to be punished. She deserves to do her time. But like, she doesn't fucking deserve what he did to her. Yeah. At yeah. all. However, there is still compelling, as unfortunate as it is, human drama to be told in them getting back together and things like that. There's, yes. There are absolutely stories that can be told there that or about things people do in real life and encounter in real life, as horrible as it may be. Um, but in the films, it looks like they're breaking up, which sucks because Birds of Prey, I think, could be fun if it wasn't for the fact the trailer shows that overhanging shadow of Jared Leto's Joker. Her motivation in it seems to be like, fuck Mr. J. And it's like, that's great, but you keep mentioning him. I don't think it's going to be as bad as you think it is. I, I, mean, we'll I see, hope but... it isn't, but the trailer's using uses yeah, it yeah. as its selling point. And I'm like, I like her getting liberated from him, absolutely. But if she keeps mentioning him, he's still living rent-free in her head. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. it's like, well, and, and also, it means us, the viewers, are being reminded of the Jared Leto Joker throughout a movie. We're, well, we're going to be constantly reminded of it. In the trailers, the bit where like, she throws the knife yeah, at her yeah, picture I get it, I get it. and it's just, it's a comic book Joker. Yeah. And it's like, are you... Are you visually trying to make us forget about the other guy? Because I hope so. Th- like Batman v Superman, not like 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 um, Justice League. 
relies on you having seen Batman v Superman for it to make sense, but also kind of denies the existence of Batman v Superman tonally. Yeah. Birds of Prey looks like it's, you have to know, Harley Quinn's story from Suicide Squad, but we're going to ignore Suicide Squad? I don't know if you have to know her story from Suicide Squad as much as you you just have to know that she's the Joker's girlfriend. But also, like, yes, Harley Quinn is a very popular character in mainstream popular culture, but I would say she's still not known by the mainstream cinema goers just yet. I mean, we'll see how it shakes out in the film. Yeah, I get what, you, I get what you're coming from. Uh, the same way that Ghostbusters 2016 relies on you just knowing what the, the, the key points of the original Ghostbusters are for you to have a moment of, yay! When they did that bit. Arrive, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, as a result, it means the film is very much just a checklist of things and, and has no agency and... Ugh, it's a fucking rare. He did it, it's a man. And it, oh, fuck it. It needed, it needed for Paul Feig and Katie Dippold, who have done good work, good work elsewhere, to have not written that script. Or allowed that much improv to make it into the edit. Mm. Oh my god. But anyway, uh, Jared Leto was upset that they weren't having the solo Joker movie. And it's like, well, do you know how you distinct yourself from the other one? How we can have two Jokers running concurrently? You do another film. You do another film with the ASAP. What you do is you fucking apologise for being an obnoxious twat. And you make another movie with them ASAP. But the reason why I bring this up, and even though we didn't enjoy Joker, I bring this up because Jared Leto has now been revealed by a few sources... Yes. tried to sabotage the production of Joker in its infancy through legal means. Tried to spell out the fact that his contract yeah. meant that they could not have another Joker. Like, this is this. If we're doing Joker solo movie, it should be me. Let's do this. Let's yeah. make it happen. Um, shit-talking executives and getting muddled up in the production in its early days. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And then on the release of the new movie... How much press did you see of Jared Leto talking about how he was hurt and offended? Good! They went ahead with it. But, like, why is he doing that? Why are you doing that? Because it's a last-ditch effort to try and sabotage it in some way. Because he's hoping that that hot topic swell of sales from 2016 indicates (laughs) what he hopes it indicates. What he probably believes it indicates, which is that he is the best thing since Sliced Ledger. And it's like, you're not, I imagine that... I imagine that Jared Leto is the kind of guy who spends a lot of time in the, in Hot Topic, <laughs> cruising for girlfriends. Now, <laughs> part of his contract was to be in Suicide Squad Two, the as, as it was Suicide called Squad, on Don Pedro's now, called, now yeah. the Suicide Squad, which is directed by James Gunn. James Gunn, who in the past has made offensive jokes, which are like unforgivable jokes. But jokes, statements, things he has apologised for and moved on from and has shown through his work and his public conduct to be not the edgelord wannabe offensive dude that wrote the jokes back in 2009. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy is literally about someone be- moving shitty away from that persona. Being less shitty <laughs> yeah. people. Guardians 2 is about less shitty people overcoming the urge to be shitty people. Yeah despite the shit around them, and as a result, trying to make the people around them better people. But they're not cinema. Um, anyway. <laughs> God's sake, Marty. Um, so, you know, that that's the thing. James Gunn is very clearly, like, anti-pedophile. Yeah. Having, unfortunately, used it as a basis for jokes is, you know, and we don't, we don't know him personally, but it seems likely he's not a pedophile. Jared Leto Um, regularly sleeps with or pursues young fans of his, mostly fans of his because of him being in 30 Seconds to Mars. When you're in a rock band, you do tend to have a lot of groupies. Groupies do tend to, the ones who get obsessed with the act, be on the younger side. There are legendary stories from both the musicians and the groupies themselves of people sleeping with massive musicians in their careers at some point. But it's usually stories of like, oh, Jagger slept with like three girls at the same time, but he was 22 and they were 17, 18, 19. Like, they're all kind of in the same bracket. Yeah. It's earlier in the career. There's no creepy power dynamic really being played on here aside from the fan uh, fan and uh, idol thing. But even so, it's like, these are small gigs. These are human beings in the same period of their life. This, that, and the other, blah, 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 whatever. Like, you get groupies. But you don't have fucking, like, Dave Grohl going out and trying to sleep with every young fan of Foo Fighters, for Probably example. Probably because he's married. 
Well, that too, obviously. But I mean, like, it's not like a thing of, oh, it's excusable. Oh, it's expected. Yeah. Like, it's not. Jared Leto, regularly, has been documented by people he has slept with and those he has, like, pursued, aggressively tried to get people to sleep with him. Or has slept with people. The pattern being that they are all very young. Now, Jared Leto, we're talking purely on aesthetics here. Jared mm-hmm. Leto is a very good-looking man. He's a very youthful-looking man. You look at Jared Leto, big beard, no beard, no fucking eyebrows, whoever he's looking, you're like, that is a very young, handsome face. Jared Leto's in his 40s, guys. Jared Leto should not be pursuing 17-year-old fans to sleep with him. For several reasons. Mm. Most legal, but also, you're not 20, dude. This isn't the early days of 30 Seconds to Mars. You're not living the rock star lifestyle where you're having consensual sex with fans. Mm. You are in a power dynamic for sure at this point. Yeah. This is creepy, dude. This is creepy, man. Even Shaggy hates it. And his name's Shaggy. Yeah. As in the carpet. No. Um. So. Yeah. You know, just please. <laughs> Rarit, she's underage. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> leave Velma alone. Velma's not interested. <laughs> you seen that? Neither's fucking... Daphne, but that doesn't stop him. Well, hey! well. you've seen that fucking clip oh, doing the rounds God, again I'm making recently. Really awful. Have you seen that, you seen that clip doing so the rounds fast. again recently from Classic Scooby Doo? Where like <laughs> the, the premise is Daphne's been kidnapped, and, and Fred and Velma find this. It's like a, it's a bed sheet, and there's someone underneath it going. The first thing it's like a ghost. Someone disguises a ghost. They're like, "Wait a minute!" And it's like, "Oh my god!" Like, it's Daphne. You know, they get her out and untie it. Yeah. But the thing is, you see the sheet and you hear her going, mm, 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 and Velma goes, "That's Daphne." <laughs> and the clips, the clips doing the rounds now. People going, said with the conviction of someone who has heard Daphne sound like that before. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Oh my god. And then you dig in it and you're like, of course, none of it is surface level sexual, but there is a lot of suggestive stuff, even in the earliest Scooby Doo. You know what I've been noticing that in it's recently? It's brilliant. I love Scooby Doo. Teen Titans go. Teen Titans go is They get a lot of crap yeah. past the radar. Oh my god. And it's great. Even the films, which are the more publicized yeah. like entries, where more people are going to see the cinematic one and the, the recent DVD one. And they still fill it with stuff where you're like, wait, what? Yeah. Wait, what the fuck? What's the difference is this? You? What the hell? That's because they that? put it in their funnels and it just goes over the kids' heads. It's great. Pantomime, motherfucker. Yep. Um, sunrise, motherfucker. <laughs> Supplies, motherfucker. So, basically what I'm getting at is, Jared Lowe's a dick. And this past week, it's become more and more evident with also the admission that he's not going to be in the Suicide Squad because James Gunn has openly shat <laughs> on Jared Leto's predilection for pursuing underage fans before oh, yeah, online. Yeah. And has also said he would never work with him. And then got the Suicide Squad gig. And Jared Leto's name, as you probably noticed, was not in that big cast announcement. It has since been confirmed by camps at Warner Brothers and on Leto's side that Jared Leto is not in the Suicide Squad. Mm. So the whole point of me just bringing this up was some of that was brought to light this week. And I just wanted to talk once again about how shitty a human being Jared Leto is. And how being a shitty human being does not a good actor make. Nor a good Joker performance. True when do you think story. We're gonna, when do you think we're next going to see a classic Joker in, in a new film? I'm holding out hope we'll get one in the Matt Reeves take at some point. But like I said, I don't want it right away. I mean, that's assuming the Matt Reeves take is going to get beyond the first one. It's, Which... it's been greenlit as a trilogy. Yeah. And I can't but... see a Batman movie not making bank. Uh, yeah. I mean, even, ba- even Batman adjacent movies kind of make bank because mm. look at Joker. That hasn't even got Batman in it. Birds of Prey, mm. set in Gotham. Mm. The villain's Black Mask. Yeah, that's probably going to make a bit of Three of our Imagine. main cast members are Batman regulars Harley Quinn, Renee Montoya, and The Huntress. That being said, Batman was arguably the main character of Justice League and just that didn't do well at all. But which actually, is, which is weird because it was, but that was also gliding off of the success of yeah. Wonder Woman, which did so well. But I think part of the reason that Justice League didn't do well is because it had so much of an uphill struggle to turn a profit because they'd spent so much fucking money on on it. Also, that really confused marketing. 
Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Half yeah. of the marketing, yeah. there's Superman. Half of the marketing, where's Superman? <laughs> I imagine, I, but I imagine like the casual viewer who maybe grew up with the, com- the comic books, like someone who's like 60, who grew up reading Justice League and Justice Society as a kid, sees those posters and is like, where's Superman? I mean, to be fair, I, What's watched, going on? I um, watched Man of Steel yeah. and Ju- Batman vs. Superman and was asking the mm. whole time, where's Superman? So... That's not necessarily the marketing's fault. Getting naked in a hot tub for Netflix. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, that Witcher trailer came out. I totally forgot about that. And then they posted that still image as like a teaser yeah, image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone's just been replaying. There's a whole thread underneath people saying, where's his square bare feet? <laughs> Where are his fucking video game feet propped up on the side of the tub, I guys? don't know. The you Witcher... say you know what we like, but we don't <laughs> see the feet that we like to take the piss out of. I think it looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued for the Witcher. I hope it's good. I want it to be good. I want something to be good. I want things to be I'd good. I'd like something good, please. Watchmen's good. I've still not watched the third one yet, but it's it's been good. And I've just noticed that the, 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 the first part of the soundtrack has finally been released digitally. So mm. go and get on some of that Trent Reznor Atticus Ross soundtrack bullshit. It's so good. I will climb aboard. It's so good. Do you know else people should get on top of? I'm really going to skirt around that question. Not Jared Leto. Okay. Get in touch with us, boys and girls. Hey! BigDamnContact.gmail.com. You can also hit us up on Twitter at BigDamnCast. If you enjoy the show and want to support us on our whiffles and waffles and also get a bunch of exclusive content way earlier than the rest of the internet, even inform future content, topics you want us to cover, mm. head to Patreon.com slash BigDamnCast. While you're there, go to Twitch.tv slash BigDamnStream. Give the stream a follow. Matthew plays video games. I play video games. We play video games. And we also apparently make very dark jokes in a podcast where the news is light this week. <laughs> Fucking hell. We, I, I'm so sorry. I made some very crass jokes this week. I made worse. Don't you fret. Oh. Don't you fret. Hey, they were only jokes. They were only jokes. And unless the head of Disney randomly sees them and decides to fire us from Guardians 3 reactively, <laughs> then I think we're fine. I'm never going to work in the MCU again. Oh, wait. Until uh, <laughs> next time, fuck you! Stop names that you're not supposed to